Well, Ann Coulter, of course, best-selling author, a uh, great columnist. You can go to AnnCoulter.com. Uh, a new column comes out tonight. Uh, follow her on Twitter, Ann Coulter Twitter. Make sure you get her book, Resistance is Futile. You Democrats, if you just read this book, you might be doing better. Resistance is Futile. Uh, Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fantastic. How are you, Mark Simone? Very good. I just feel bad for uh, old Joe Biden. It was kind of humiliating. <laughs> I know you're saying that ironically, but I actually do feel sorry for him. It is humiliating, and I don't think he's a mean person. He's just, he's just past his prime. And I think, I mean, I was wondering yesterday, why are the polls so completely off? It's one thing when the polls are off with regard to Trump. I understand that. People are terrified to tell anyone, even a pollster, even in the privacy of their own homes. Well, actually, nothing's running out to, to MAGA rallies and wearing the hat. They're not that terrified, or at least all of them are. But um, the polls were manifestly off with, with Trump. But with Biden, I mean, he's been way, way, way ahead in the polls. And I think what's happening is it's, it's really been, for one thing, name recognition, but also um, people remembering the Biden they used to know. And then as each primary and caucus comes to their state, they get a closer look at him and see that, that he's really, he's showing his age. <laughs> he's not the old Biden. So I do sort of feel sorry for him, um, though the good news is um, that his vote seemed, at least a good portion of them, seemed to be going to Amy Klobuchar, um, and um, if, if the Democratic Party still has any normal people voting for it, um, she, she would obviously be the best choice. I, I'm always torn. I don't know about you. I think I can guess with you of whether, whether I should root for the most re- preposterous Democrat um, in the hopes that it will make it easier for the Republican, Trump, to win, um, but then, but then, you know, there's always the danger <laughs> that that doesn't happen, that the Republican loses and we have a lunatic as, as our president. So I can't say I'm wild about, about the Bernie Sanders um, march to victory here, um, because you really, I mean, the odds are the incumbent president wins re-election, but you never know, and it's a little scary. Uh, what about uh, Mike Bloomberg? Can you win without any personality or charisma? <laughs> Oh, my gosh, you are the best interviewer. <laughs> yes, that is our question here on, on Jeopardy. Um, um, it's an I interesting know, point, though. It is an interesting point, and he's doing pretty well. In I mean, surprisingly, he hasn't been in any of the debates. He hasn't been on any of the primary votes yet. You'd have to write him in, as I guess people did in Dixville Notch, um, apparently, as Dixville Notch goes, the country does not go. <laughs> you saw that, that Bloomberg won. Yeah. I mean, there are five votes in Dixville Notch. And he won three. So. Or something like that. But he, won, quote, won both the Republican and Democratic primary with those big three votes. Um, yeah, he probably sent, <laughs> sent the five people a, a small check, probably yes, cheaper than yes. buying votes in New York. Yes. Um, but I know everybody's talking about that now. Um, I don't know if you saw Thomas Friedman's column. Oh, what morning. a ridiculous column. <laughs> Did you, oh, you saw? Well, the part I liked was, <laughs> which I, I am going to tweet out, it was the middle of the night um, when I was reading it, um, is, and, and this isn't the first time you've said it, he said it, I mean, the same re- reasonable d- Democrats, and look, I disagree with him and I disagree with Bloomberg, pretty much down the line on everything, but, but Friedman was, you know, hectoring <laughs> the Democratic Party to run someone who believes in borders. Um, I, I think he actually used a Trump line, a very close to a Trump line, build a huge fence with a nice gate. That, that's a total, that's a direct ripoff from Trump. Yeah, that's clearly what the people want, and I yeah. think the Democrats and, and Trump aren't helping their, their prospects by, by not giving it to us or, or offering it to us in the case of Democrats. I, I, on one hand, 
I'm always poo-pooing the idea of a contested convention, and I'm not really wavering on that right now. Um, not as yet, <laughs> because every every four years, for whichever party is um, is having primaries, there's always early on, oh, it could be a contested convention, and what would that look like, and let's talk about a contested, and then there's never a contested convention. Um, so I tend to think, no, at this point, it looks like Sanders is going to get it. Um, well, I don't maybe, know. Maybe Klobuchar will move up, yeah. but I was thinking if 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 we're going to have a contested convention in our lifetimes, Mark Simone, this seems to have laid the groundwork for it because there are an awful lot of Democrats who feel like, wow, as, as Friedman said, this is so stupid. Um, the only person I'm I'm not sure that this is true. I think Trump can could beat a lot of them, um, but um, the, as Friedman said, the only person um, who could lose to Donald Trump is Bernie Sanders. I know Wall Street is terrified of Sanders. That actually makes me like him more, um, but, you know, he's running as an open socialist, honeymooned in the Soviet Union. Um, he's an old-style lefty. I don't know if you saw that meme I sent around yesterday. Ber- Bernie's second State of the Union address. We are out of bread. <laughs> <laughs> so I do think Bernie's a tough sell, and also I kind of still believe, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not off by much, that Bernie has both a ceiling and a floor of about 20%. It's easy to win primaries if you have a hardcore group. Now, okay, admittedly, 26% last night, Buttigieg, 24 Klobuchar, 20 percent of the vote. When you have eight candidates running and you have an absolutely hardcore base of 20 percent, um, you're going to do very well in the early primaries. When it comes down to you and one other guy, um, you, you might have a ceiling, too. I could be totally off on this, um, and I think I wouldn't poo-poo Bernie Sanders too much because I sort of feel like listening to a lot of the pundits last night... Um, who, who, you know, while congratulating Sanders, they all seem to have this feeling that, oh, come on, the Democrats are not running this guy for president. Um, that's what they said about Trump. Hey, how, and, how come you're not mentioning uh, Buttigieg? Uh, it, I know he looks like a bad TED talk, but uh, one thing about Buttigieg, he's like Bill Clinton. He doesn't have any real principle. He'll switch to be moderate. He'll do whatever he needs to do to be in the in the middle lane, and maybe he'll be the guy. You know, you are totally right about that, and I'll 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 tell you the truth. I'm not mentioning Buttigieg because I think he is such a self righteous prig. He reminds me of Jimmy Carter. He is just so full of himself that <laughs> oh no no I can't take this. One other thing I noticed about him, um, he is totally ripping off Obama's speaking style and even some of Obama's lines. Yeah. I mean, he's almost like a mimic. The way the, 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 the intonation in his speech is where a speech starts high and it ends in a low voice yeah. with just a few words. <laughs> and and, and, and at, at, after Iowa, he was even doing some of that. And this was like a signature line of, of Obama's. It wasn't exactly this, but it was that, you know, they tell us, wait our turn. They tell us next time. Um, well, we are the people we've been waiting for. It, he, Buttigieg said that almost word for word. Well, hey, don't rule out a guy who's willing to flip-flop, plagiarize, do whatever he has to do. He's focus group to death. Don't rule this little guy out. I, yeah, you're right. It's wishful thinking that I'm just ignoring. <laughs> because I, I, of all of all the uh, things I dislike about political candidates, um, you know, destroying the United States of America, I'll admit, ranks very high. Um, <laughs> but self-righteous earnestness is a close second. <laughs> Hi, he's a young gay John Kerry. <laughs> John Kerry was a dream compared to this guy. No, it's the self-righteousness. If you watch all old clips of Jimmy Carter, well, nobody cares, nobody remembers, but I just, I just hate this self-righteousness. And, and uh, look, this is a small point, um, but, uh, you know, I, I watched, as I'm sure you did, I'm not sure how many of your listeners did, watched the, the three victory speeches last night. I've watched a lot of victory speeches, either from primaries or regular elections in my lifetime. Um, neither Klobuchar nor Bernie Sanders mentioned, no, Klobuchar did it very briefly at the end, um, you know, after thanking her volunteers, saying, she said something like, and I thank my wonderful husband, John. <laughs> um, no, only the gay guy <laughs> has to do this big thing about 
out. The love of my life, Chastain. <laughs> It was pretty funny. But, I'll uh, knock it off. You're going to do something like that gore, tip, or kiss at the convention any minute now. Yeah, I hate to say it, we're out of time, but uh, this is I can tell there's going to be a great column coming out tonight uh, by <laughs> Ann Coulter. Uh, go to AnnCoulter.com. Hey, make sure you follow Ann Coulter on Twitter. Great stuff all day long. And get her latest book, Resistance is Futile. Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. Right, take care.